the, the last thing I wanted to sort of cover is sort of just the identity question, which I think is going to be a hard question as we try, it, it, you know, if anyone tries to build something like this. And it's a problem that not even the, the tech bros have solved, and they keep making it worse. In my opinion, like, the thing that would be helpful to it is to have a way of making it so that people had some sort of public-private key pair that they could maintain that you could have some level of trust was actually them. If you had that, you could do a lot of these problems very easily because you could just say, hey, I'm going to credit this public key with this amount of value and, you know, that would be very easy to track and it would be very easy for the person to spend it and it would be very easy to do all the other things around it. Each factory would have a public-private key pair, all the rest of it. But key management is an entire disaster that nobody has looked at, even from just a user interface experience in years. There's an old paper called Why Johnny Can't Encrypt. And there are follow-up papers like Why Johnny Still Can't Encrypt and Why Special Agent Johnny Still Can't Encrypt, which are great reads on like why this is such a problem. Right. Like, so one of the things for me thinking about, say, an open general ledger with that public transactions should be open and public. So transactions between like productive functions are fine, but private consumption should be encrypted. Right. You you can follow the transactions, but you won't be able to say who this person is. Right. You know, that everybody can't just see, oh, yeah, Tom bought a dildo today or whatever. Right. Right. So. Um, I did buy dildo. No, I didn't. No, <laughs> maybe I did. So, like for, for me thinking about it, I was thinking that there you could build into a ledger system something that would like like we're talking about these automated kind of like bots or whatever that can be used for like both for production but also for looking for fraud and that would be able to pick out like say if it looked like one person was getting transactions from loads of people for some reason that look dodgy right. that you could build into the ledger itself that for example just making this up like but i'm sure you this could be proven pretty easily that you could say well pick a, a committee of 100 people to look at this one's person's transactions and if they all agree to decode it then it will be decrypted right so that you could make these dodgy transactions public but based upon like you know a randomized selection of people to be in a committee that could look at a thing Right. To me, like stuff like that, I could imagine being quite useful. Right. But the, the, that still de- sort of depends upon having a way of sort of cryptographically uh, finding out who a person is. And that itself is a problem that has been unsolved, um, which, is, which is sort of a problem and like involves like a level of trust. If, you, if you're interested in it, there is uh, some discussion of this idea of key escrow which most of the time has been used for promoting terrible ideas. Like, for example, all keys would be generated by the government and they would be escrowed by the government and you would, you, the government would have the backup for all of your keys. That's probably not a great idea. <laughs> a centralized node with every decryption key yes. for the economy. Yeah, but like, how can you get past that? Like, it does seem that there has to be some way of it. Like, say, for example, you want to decrypt to, like, uh, I've, been, I've been doing dodgy transactions, say, and my thing comes up and they want to say, oh, this person is actually Tom, right? Like, you would have to have a list somewhere or you'd have to have the capability to decrypt. So there is actually a method from earlier cyber cache systems well before the current version where you could actually encode into the system a way such that only if you did something dodgy would you be able to undo the encryption. Okay, so you have some kind of like a key in the computer code or whatever that is able to reduce the hash difficulty or something. It's not that you can reduce the hash, but so there's this this neat concept that got completely ignored by a lot of the current version of cryptocurrency called blinding, which is that you can do things where you can get people to sign documents that they do not know what they're signing, which can be useful in these very abstract cases. and through that sort of protocol, you can also make it such that if you find that they decided to do something dodgy around like reusing a transaction or something like that, you can use the how they signed the documents blindly 
to unblind it and figure out who did the dodgy thing and like get the information that would let you look at their information. 